Happy Halloween, everyone. I'm Jay. And I'm Mike. And I'm Rich Evans. And uh, we're going to watch Halloween, John Carpenter's classic, Halloween. So grab your pumpkin beer and uh, candy corn. Dean Cundy. This is this was a horrible shock to me the other day. I was looking up Dean Cundy because I was watching this and Halloween 2. I was like, man, these are some good looking movies. The cinematography is great. And I knew he went on to do the Back to the Future movies. He did Jurassic Park, Apollo 13, all these big movies. I was like, what's he done lately? And I looked him up. Uh, you know what he did? Wait. Tell us in a second, do you know anything about Cool Lesby? <laughs> I do not. I want my first name to be Cool, K-O-O-L. Was that a credit that said Cool Lesby? Luz, L-U-S-B-Y, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, continue. That's a pretty great name. Um, oh, yeah, so... Uh, Haddonfield, Illinois is a fictional town, by the way. Haddonfield, Illinois is not a real place, no. no. And this is clearly shot in California. But continue with your Dean, Dean Cundy story. Oh, yeah, well, Dean Cundy, what do you, what kind of, you know, what do you think he'd be up to these days? Don't know, Jay. He did Jack and Jill. It's a long way down, Jay. I know. That was shocking to me. Jack and Jill, the Garfield movie. I'm shocked that Jack and Jill even had a cinematographer. I, yeah, I thought that whole movie was shot on a cell phone. Although working on an Adam Sandler production means you got paid. That's true. I guess it's he decided that he was tired of uh, doing creative work, good uh, cinematic looking material, and he would just uh, uh, point a softbox at someone and sit back and collect his paycheck. Well, instead of making fun of Adam Sandler, we sh probably should be talking about the groundbreaking uh, Steadicam one-take shot that this yes. movie opens with. Although it's not actually one take. It's, There's a couple it's hidden several cuts. breaks in it, yes. But, but it's still very impressive, even though you see the, the shadow of the camera in a couple parts coming up here. Now, and for some reason, Michael Myers looks up at his own hand while he stabs, but that's okay. Yeah. It's forgivable in the context yeah, you gotta of a show, movie. Yeah, that, that was so probably someone could splash some blood on her. Probably, yeah. And then pan back. Mm -hmm. this, this is one of those really early memory movies for me where you watched it a hundred times as a kid and all these things just stick with you. Yeah. Especially this shot. I imagery sticks with you more when uh, they hold on a shot for more than five seconds. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's not just quick cutting. It doesn't happen anymore. No. And here we have uh, Donald Pleasance. Good old went, Donald Pleasance. Who, who went on to be the best part of a uh, continuing series that just got worse and worse. He was always the best part because he got crazier and crazier as the movies went along. He is overacting so much in Halloween 5, it's great. We both know he's alive. But you know where he is! <laughs> well, that, that was his final one, right? Halloween 6 was his final one. That's where they, six? Okay. they shot the movie, and it was so terrible they went and did reshoots, but he had died by the time they did the reshoots, so they did this really awkwardly edited ending to the movie where he says, I have some business to attend to, and then they just cut to the, the Michael Myers mask on mm -hmm. the ground, and you hear him yell yep. off camera. <laughs> I, I saw I saw that movie in the theater. I did too. Yeah, and I was like, "What?" Yeah, that was that was. I think that was shortly before Scream. Like, it was kind of yeah. revived horror movies. I remember seeing Halloween Six and uh, Hellraiser Bloodlines. Oh, I the think, fourth one in space. In the yes, I, I think in, in <laughs> theaters, and it was like no one was in there. Yeah, no one saw those like the tail end of the. 80s, early 90s horror movies, and then Scream revived the horror genre. Yeah. But I remember, like, they throw the mask on the ground, and you hear just some crew member go, ah! No, it is him yelling. It's, oh, it's, audio, from different... it's audio from the original uh, version okay. of the ending. It just sounds like a different person. And yeah, it sounds, it sounds like... completely bullshit. And then uh, then it cuts to black, and a credit comes up that says, In memory of yeah. Donald Pleasance. It's the most horrible way to yeah. end your career. <laughs> so sad. Poor Donald Pleasance. What, what is the original ending? Oh God, it's this whole thing with this cult and there's like magic stones. <laughs> and, and Paul, Paul Rudd is in it before Paul Rudd is anybody. I'm trying to tell you in the hospital. I think Michael is under the influence of an evil rune. Thorn. Paul Rudd plays the grown up version of the little kid who's being babysat here. Yes, Paul Rudd lit, puts the magic stones in a circle on the ground, and then when Michael Myers walks into it, he's paralyzed and he can't move anymore. Did that happen in the film? <laughs> that happened in the, the original ending. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I remember that. It's the... just terrible. Barely remember what happens in two. I remember they make it an extension of the same night. It, it ends exactly yeah. where this one 
uh, or starts where this one ends. Yeah. And uh, Laurie Strode Mostly, goes to the hospital and does nothing for 90% of the movie. It takes place in a, you know, all I remember is this, uh, she or Donald Pleasance turns on the gas line and lights a match and yeah. Michael Myers starts on fire. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Loomis and Michael Myers yeah. die in an explosion until part four when he just has a tiny uh, scar on his cheek. Yep. And then he survives a gas station explosion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's just as uh, adept at survive, survival as Michael Myers is. He's fireproof. He's fireproof. So there's Tommy Doyle, who would grow up to be Paul Rudd. Which reminds me, you mentioned Hellraiser Bloodline. Yes. Do you know who's in that movie? Mm, I, uh, I... A Adam Scott from Parks and Recreation. Oh, is he? I, it might be his first movie. He's really young in it, but yeah. All, the, all these modern uh, comedic actors that started out in horrible horror sequels. Yeah, they should bring back Pinhead. I'm sure they have on, on, on home video. I'm going to a real live secret hell world party. <laughs> Welcome, Hellraisers. Invitations. But if you need anything, just... Scream. There, uh, there's so many Pinhead sequels, like direct-to-video sequels. Even I stopped paying attention to that series. It's it's all about the atmosphere. This movie has great atmosphere. The look of this, even though it was shot in Southern California, so much of it passes for the Midwest, even though you occasionally see a palm tree in the background. Well, I, I don't know. I, I never got the vibe that this is in the Midwest. Oh, really? I, 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 I bought it as a kid. It never bothered me fall leaves in front of the camera lens. It's, it's sort of charming like now right watch, there. when you watch it and you see there's a couple <laughs> leaves in front of the, and yeah. you look down the block and there's no leaves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I guess they had like four bags of leaves and they would just throw them on the ground. Then after each take, everyone would have to gather up the leaves and put them in the bag and move them to the next location. That is one weird, th there's a couple problems with this movie. What is the fact that he can drive? No yeah. problems. And, <laughs> He's and been incarcerated since he was a small no, child. No uh, middle school in the Midwest has outdoor classroom entrance either. <laughs> That's, That's true. Specifically a West Coast thing. <laughs> the boogeyman's coming. The boogeyman. I was so bad for him here when his pumpkin breaks. Yeah, yeah. This poor kid. Now that you're pointing these California things out to me, Mike, I, I, this movie will be ruined for me now. I'm so sorry, Rich. <laughs> I can't, I, I can't unlearn that. I'm aware of all that stuff. Like, I'll, there's something about it that, like, the the color temperature looks is like, it looks like like breezy Midwest in, well, in October. It's, it's very overcast looking. It's yeah, not it doesn't look colorful. like sunny California. Because yeah. now, now I'm picturing you know being a kid again, going to class in the middle of February. <laughs> That's insane. I mean, having to go outside yeah. to get to your class. Yeah. <laughs> they don't build schools like that here, Rich. No. There's their leaves. That's all they got. <laughs> is, it, is it more interesting if Michael Myers comes from an abusive father, or is it just more interesting if... No, it's not more interesting if there's all this backstory. Yeah, I mean, isn't it more, you know, he's just, he's just a crazy guy. Is he yeah. a normal family and yeah. one day just stabs? Well, again, it's, it's a different type of movie. R Michael Myers could be... In one version of it, he could be a kid who grows up in an abusive, drunken family that turns into a psychopath. This one, it's, it's, he's, he's a person, but he's pure evil. Yeah. And there's no soul. You know, I'm, I'm just, asking, I'm asking which is more interesting. This? Yeah. The non-Rob <laughs> Zombie? <laughs> I was, I was asking to start a discussion, not to be belittled, Mike. The, the, the answer is this one. Yeah. End of discussion. <laughs> This, this film by itself is, is perfect. Yes. It's fine. Anything outside of this, I'm fine with Michael Myers as a Freddy uh, Krueger type comical <laughs> villain just stabbing people for no reason, just for fun. Leave this one alone. Don't remake it. Yeah. You know, Rob Zombie should have made Michael Myers part eight. Michael My They already did Michael Myers in space, didn't they? Or No, Michael Myers never went no, to Jason space. Jason went to space. Jason went to space. Leprechaun went to space. Hellraiser went to space. Everyone but the astronauts have gone to space. <laughs> did you know the moon landings are fake, Rich? I, Stanley I, Kubrick's I behind knew that. Right? Stanley Kubrick did it. Yeah. 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 So well, why why is it all of the horror movies go into space when they get really desperate? Th that that's exactly why, because they're desperate. I don't know why space actually. Like, what makes you think Jason should go to space? Uh, Michael Myers didn't quite. I, I think it, it's just such a simple concept. You can't really expand upon it too much. The only, the only thing they could get away with is in Halloween Resurrection when they did the webcams 
and it was broadcast on the internet. Oh, yes, back in uh, <laughs> 2003? Yes. 2003, when the internet was new, uh, they, there was a slew of horror films based around webcams. You're alive on the internet. Uh, and remember fear.com? Yeah. And I remember you joking. Actually, you might have been, because we saw Halloween 6 together, or Halloween Resurrection together. Yeah. And I think you joked about there should be a movie called murder.com. Yeah. And then a couple months later, fear.com trailer uh, showed up. Yeah. Oh, here's here's a fun little, little tidbit coming up. Uh, they just saw Michael Myers peeking out from behind the bushes. Yes. She goes up to look. And uh, when she turns around in the, her reverse, you see a little wisp of smoke come by. And that's actually from John Carpenter, because he's standing right next to the camera, like, chain smoking. <laughs> so you'll, you'll see it in a second here. That's, that's classic okay. John Carpenter. Okay. Yeah. There, there, oh, there it there. is. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Even I never do that. Wow. <laughs> in the remake, this, this uh, grave digger character is played by Sid Haig which isn't distracting at all. Just cast a random nobody in that part. Yeah. Rob Zombie. Don't cast all your horror convention friends in every role. This is why you need a prequel remake where Rob Zombie explains that uh, Ken Voorhees is taking a dump and Michael Myers uh, punches him to death and then steals his mechanics jumpsuit. Yeah, yeah. Hey buddy, just give you a heads up. I got a taco deluxe supreme talking back at me. So I'm gonna be a while. So do you mind waiting somewhere else and let me pass this beast in peace? Speaking of horror conventions, John Carpenter does conventions. He does. Which is bizarre. He, I, yeah, he's so laid back and like he doesn't care about anything anymore. It seems like he wouldn't even bother. But I saw him when we were at uh, uh, Toronto Fan Expo. Yeah. And it was great, he told a great story. Someone asked what his thoughts were on the remakes and uh, he said he loves when his movies get remade because he just puts out his hand and a check floats down into it. <laughs> How old is he now? Not as old as he looks. I know that. Really? Yeah. He was, I think he was 30 when he made this movie, which I always think of this as being his first movie, even though it's not. He did Dark Star and Assault on Precinct 13 before this, but I think he was 30 when he made this. I love how all these brown leaves are falling from green trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so distracting to me now, Mike. Why did you point this out? <laughs> my brain my brain used to be ignorant. I, I can suspend my disbelief for this. This is I have a problem with this aspect of the movie. Now we've had Donald Pleasance, Dr. Loomis, setting everything up. He has a great speech in this scene about looking into Michael Myers' eyes and just seeing blackness. After that, he has nothing to do for the rest of the movie. He's literally standing next to a bush for the next forty five minutes. Yep. It's a little awkward. And so this is this is not a set. No, this is what the house looked like. Literal, uh, worn down, uh, dilapidated house. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to watch a movie that has real things in it. <laughs> and holds on shots. This whole movie is long, uh, gliding uh, two shots. Oh, this is where they discover that Michael Myers ate a dog. <laughs> that's, what that's what they're looking at right there. It's still warm. He got hungry. Don't they find like uh, like a, a, a pot of beans or something on the stove? I don't remember In the that. kitchen? I don't think so. I think they did, damn it. I don't recall this. They're like, he was eating beans. Are you sure you're not thinking of a sequel? Mm. I have no memory of this. Why would you eat beans if you have dog? I uh, I don't remember this dog. I, I, I think you're, you're thinking of another movie. No, no, he looks down and he says, he must. what, what happened to that dog? Are you oh, thinking, he must have got hungry. Are you thinking of a different Dean Cundy movie, Jack and Jill? It's possible, yeah. Are you, are you thinking of The Watchmen? Didn't Rorschach eat raw beans? No, I, I saw The Watchmen once and I don't remember a thing about it. <laughs> Please don't compare that hack flop to John Carpenter's classic Halloween. <laughs> Rorschach. <pfft. laughs> Give me a break. Hey, Rorschach ended up playing Freddy, so there's a loose connection there. There's a loose connection there. Yeah, remember the Nightmare on Elm Street remake? What a hit. <laughs> Donald Pleasance is a class act. Yes. I uh, originally tried to get uh, Peter Cushing or Christopher Lee for this role, and they both turned it down. Peter Cushing. Yeah. Wow. Well, he was, it was, you know, as a connection to the Hammer horror films. Yeah, yeah. But thank God they ended up with Donald Pleasance, because he was very loyal to this series. And he made the sequels more entertaining than they should be by just being batshit crazy. So naturally they asked me to do it and I did it. 
and I'm doing it, and it's very enjoyable. And then they preserved his, his legacy and his memory in Halloween 6. Yes. When they released an unfinished film and dedicated <laughs> it to him. In memory of. It's going to be a very good film. I think it's probably, probably one of the best. Yeah, this is his great speech about there's nothing left of a human being inside of Michael Myers. Now, at some point, he says that Michael Myers was cooking beans. <laughs> I swear to God, this happened. <laughs> He's not a human being anymore. If you look into his eyes, you see blackness. Do you smell beans? <laughs> so, well, let's talk about the mask because there are oh, probably... Yes. There's probably two people who don't know about the mask. <laughs> yeah. It is a uh, William Shatner Star Trek mask mm -hmm. that they painted white. Yeah. Was the hair part of the mask or did the, they add The hair that? was part of the mask. They, they cut the eye holes bigger, they painted it white, and they may have done some other minor cosmetic things to it, but you two might know better than I would. Has William Shatner ever commented on that? I'm sure William Shatner wants to be remembered as a Serial killer well, mask? I, no, I'm thinking like, what, when, what was it made, what, 78 or 77? Yeah, right in that era. I think 77 came out in 78. It's interesting to me that a uh, William Shatner Halloween mask would have been around then. Because that was, <laughs> that was before Star Trek got revived with the motion picture. That's true. Well, they they bought the cheapest mask they could. It was two dollars. <laughs> yeah, that was it. They they bought. Yeah, it was two dollars. They bought that, and they bought like a clown mask, and then they tried to decide which one they wanted to use. Yeah. So they used my mask on the movie Halloween to terrify everybody. The next Halloween with my grandkids, they went out trick or treating. I went with them. I was wearing the mask, and they would go and say trick or treat, and they usually get candy. One time, the guy said, "Get out of here." I went up to the front door and knocked on the door. The guy answered, he said, I'm sorry. And I, I leered at him with the mask, and then I yanked it off. And I stared at him. He screamed, shut the door. I went and shat there. Weren't you telling me that you thought hate for Halloween 3 was unwarranted too, but it's a, it's a good movie, or was that somebody Halloween else? Halloween 3 is insane and wonderful. It is such a weird movie. You haven't seen it, Rich? Uh, well, yeah, but it's been so long. Okay. I don't remember. I just remember the masks would turn kids' heads into bugs. Yes, the plot of the movie is uh, this crazy Irish man that runs a, uh, a factory that produces Halloween masks, steals a chunk of Stonehenge, <laughs> and chips off pieces of it and puts it in a little disc on the inside of the masks he makes. Yeah. And when a subliminal signal comes out over the TV while you're wearing the mask, it sets off something in the Stonehenge chip that turns your head into bugs. And he wants to do that because he hates children. <laughs> and that's the plot of the movie. It is so amazing. Oh, and he has a minion of robots. All of his, all the people that work at his factory are robots. Yeah, and there's like a couple great. that are investigating it. They're like news reporters or something. It's like. No, it's, it's uh, Tom Atkins. Um, and some woman that he just meets that's trying to investigate why her father died. And so she has a connection to it because her father died because of something the crazy Irish man did. And Tom Atkins get, gets involved just because he wants to bang her. Oh. <laughs> that's the movie. So it's it's definitely worth checking out. If, if people haven't seen it because Michael Myers isn't in it, just watch it as a standalone horror movie and it's wonderful. Two more days till Halloween. And you'll have that song stuck in your head for the Silver rest of the month. Silver Shamrock. Two more days to Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Two more days to Halloween, Silver Shamrock. You know who saved this movie from obscurity? Who's that? Roger Ebert. Roger Ebert? Yeah. Just by what, really? giving it a good review? When it came out, it was like universally panned by everyone. Oh. And, uh, and movies releases were a little slower back then. Mm -hmm. Um, this is one of the things they cover in that documentary, um, and everyone's like, "This is trash! It's trash! It's uh, it's you know stupid." And then John Carpenter's like, "Whatever, I'll move on to my next project." Yeah. And then when Ebert saw it, he's like, "You know, this is really good." There's actually some crap. There's actually this is really a really well-made movie, and he gave it a good review, and then it sort of like revived it, and then it came oh, okay. back to life. Yeah, I know it was like a slow build before it right. made all the monies, but right. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. This is creepy too, and she gets in the car and she sees breath on the windshield. Did you just say all the monies? He made all the monies.
this movie was the most financially successful independent film for a few decades. I think Blair Witch Project finally beat it out. Technically the most... Mad Max. Technically <laughs> uh, the most successful independent film is The Empire Strikes Back. Wow. On a technical level. That no, is I, I a, think... That is an independent film. It's not studio produced. Okay. Studio released. But well, this was, this was uh, from a, a cost to profit ratio of how much this movie cost to make, which was around $300,000 to how much it made. I thought, I thought Mad Max had that crown up until Blair Witch came out. No. Okay. <laughs> he should have really carried the body around the backside of the house. Yeah, it would be a little more inconspicuous, I would think. But uh, Michael Myers is, uh, is, is not one for subtlety. He just no. kind of walks around in broad daylight with a monster mask on. Yeah. yeah so it's 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 very advantageous that he just so happens to come home right around Halloween. Yeah. Otherwise, he would look very suspicious. He planned that out, Jay. I don't know if he planned anything out. He's pure evil. He doesn't plan these things. He just is driven by uh, pure will. Oh, there's uh, uh, Donald Pleasance just standing by a plant some more. He's gonna fuck with some kids. This is this is what he does for the middle of the movie. Mm -hmm. He looks like a pervert. <laughs> but you know, he's just trying to protect them. Yeah. He does. He thinks Michael Myers could be hanging out in this house, even though he's been hanging out there for hours, and he knows that Michael Myers is not there. Well, he's he just might. gonna stand in one spot in hopes that Michael Myers shows up. It's a perfectly valid strategy. What else, what the fuck else is he gonna do? Wander around the streets and I'd, hope I'd, he finds him? I think you could have rewritten the story where he wasn't there, he didn't get to Haddonfield yet, something where you don't just have to have him stand there for the entire middle chunk of the movie. He needs a Michael Myers detector. And, and Donald Pleasance would wear like the thing that uh, uh, Louis Tully wore on top of his head in <laughs> Ghostbusters and walk around. <laughs> I think that just would have made the movie perfect. That would have been great if he's wearing that in like parts four and five where he's really overacting and he seems like more of a crazy person than Michael Myers. Yeah, and he's yeah. wearing this uh, colander on his head. Yeah. Help me to find him. We'll find him together. I can tap into his brain waves. <laughs> Holding an insanometer in his hand that kind of like beeps when he points at the general direction of Michael Myers. Yeah. H2O, it's not a great movie. Like, the slasher elements are kind of bland, but the movie works as, as like, a like Laurie Strode confronting, literally and figuratively, much. confronting yeah. her demons and facing off against Michael Myers. She chops his head off at the end. It's great. And then the next movie, she's in an insane asylum, and Michael Myers shows up, and she falls off the roof of the building. And that's the end of her story. I'll see you in hell. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> no. The sequels are so bad. Haunting hauntings are all the rage now, Jay. That's the big thing, yeah. Torture uh torture porn uh horror stuff is no longer a thing. Yeah. Which is cool cuz I like haunting movies. <laughs> It was Slasher Revival, 97 on. Then yes, it was, all the post-screen movies. Then it was Torture, and now it's, uh, it's Ghosts. Is it me or those cigarettes look really big? <laughs> I think they're just really tiny. This is something I'll give the remake. Um, in, in this version, Michael Myers comes to the door uh, where PJ Souls is laying, and he's wearing the ghost costume. The ghost costume is not set up in this. Like, you don't see him putting it on like, oh, I'm going to scare my girlfriend. Michael Myers just shows up in the ghost costume. In the remake, they, they show that the Bob character puts on the costume first. Yeah. So it's a little weird in this version. Yeah. Well, it's nice that the remake got something right. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the shots in the remake were in focus, too. So. Anything is possible. Yeah, so now he just shows up with this ghost costume. Yeah, well, why would Michael Myers want to, to scare someone? <laughs> I mean... Because he's evil. <laughs> the visual is, is creepy, you know. Well, he, he gets close to her without her running away. All right. All right. It's a little clunky. It, it is comical in the remake, though, because the guy playing Michael Myers is, like, nine feet tall. 
So he's standing there wearing this costume, and she's like, Bob, is that you? And he's, and he's comically tall. It's clearly not your boyfriend. So he had his mask on and a, a blanket over his mask and someone's prescription glasses on over that. Yes. Yes. And he still got around all right. <laughs> well, you don't you don't know how many things he stumbled on his way up to the bedroom. <laughs> That's a deleted scene. He could have been, scene. like, just tripping like, all like over the place. In. And then he's, like, get to the door. He's like, okay, now I'm going to be really cool when I open this door. <laughs> oh, look at this. The doorknob is on one side, and then when it cuts to the exterior, it's on the other side. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, was that a boom mic shadow I saw? No, that's no, a tree. That's a tree. Yeah. Stop looking for flaws in John Carpenter's classic film, Halloween. <laughs> By the way, Rich, this is California, not the Midwest. <laughs> I knew that when I was eight. And <laughs> I was but this whole segment is great. This is what makes the movie here. It's so drawn out. This is just her walking around. She knows something's up. She doesn't know what's up, but we do. And that's where the tension comes from. We know Michael Myers is killing people. Mm-hmm. With a giant butcher knife. So that's where we fucked up when we made the recovered. We joked that the movie should be called Looking Around because we had so many scenes of just our main character walking around, and it works here because the audience knows what's happening and the character doesn't. And that's what builds tension. In our movie, the audience didn't know what was happening and the character didn't know what was happening. Neither so, did we. And neither did we. So it kind of falls flat. <laughs> Dun. Yeah. Dun. I'm just big visualizing the score. Audio yeah, I think this is the slower. The everybody knows, of course, the famous Halloween theme, but the, the slower, uh, more atmospheric uh, piece of music that plays throughout the movie, I like that a lot, too. Is that just like one note on the, the piano? Like, no, dun. that's when it gets more tense, that happens. Okay, okay. Dun. I, I can't dun, remember dun. what the score sounds like here. Yeah, no, it's, it's haunting and great. I remember going to haunted dun, houses. Dun. I don't know what Just like those is. three notes. Dun, dun. <laughs> It's like Jaws. Do -do -do. Not Jaws. Well, it's like the, not, not, not the main Jaws, but that was Star Wars that you just did. Do, 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 do. This is the, the, obviously the headstone of his sister yes. that he murdered. Yes. Um, but then, and then they show the grave. Mm -hmm. do, but the grave is like a child-sized grave. You don't really, see, you just see the... Yeah, the, so you, you see him standing next to it, and it's like... You don't see the grave. You, you just see, see the whole dug, dug out, out where for the, the headstone. Tombstone oh, that's the tombstone went there. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, they, they, weren't, they didn't try to fit a person into that. I thought they were, they were, oh my God. That's sort of a comical face. On it it is. A, uh, oh, this is a great shot coming up where Michael Myers slowly, they have like a tiny dimmer light on him, and he slowly comes in from the darkness. Yeah, these wonderful blue shafts of light, and then... Oh no, here he comes. There he yeah. is. Yeah. Can I share a Halloween memory as a child? Absolutely. In in my neighborhood there was a house and the guy would uh, he he had a perfect Michael Myers costume on and he would he would sit on the porch and then, you know, people oh. would think of stuff and then he would move mm -hmm. and then he would walk around the side of his house and um, it was always like you got to go to the Michael Myers house. You got to go to the Michael Myers house and then me and my sister and I don't know who else went there. And we're like, where's Michael Myers? And we're asking this like old lady, she's like, oh, hold on. And then we looked and I, we saw him sitting at the kitchen table, he's eating <laughs> without the mask on him. And he goes, oh, damn it. And then, and then he gets up and, he, and she goes, maybe he'll be around. And then, and then this, the music comes on, the old lady turns on, and, and he walks out around the corner of the house and he's standing there. And, now let me ask you this: When he was sitting at the table, was he eating beans? Uh, he might have been. I okay. don't. I didn't see what he was eating, but I think that's where the salt came from. It was from. really scary as a little it, kid. It it wasn't it wasn't Michael Myers, but yeah, it was the kind of thing where you'd walked across the porch to get to the door, and there was a guy, you know, a, a supposed dummy yeah. sitting at a bench in the porch, yes. and then you know, he he would stand up, yeah. but it was set up so when you ran off of the porch, there was somebody else at the end of the driveway with a chainsaw. Ah, nice. So he'd rev up the chainsaw and chase you down the driveway. Uh, that's wonderful. This is creepy. That, that, the yeah, the fact him. that it's a lockdown shot. Yeah, just far away, and he's just getting closer and closer yeah. and coming right towards not, the camera. It's not trying to get crazy. Yeah. Or, you know, you can keep running to other houses. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, you little brat. <laughs> 
Paul Rudd would never make me wait outside that long. <laughs> it would be funny if Tommy walked to the... Oh, the Paul Rudd, uh, when he, she tells him to pick up his dishes and yes. had American Summer. Yes. Yeah. He exaggerated. Uh. I wonder if Paul Rudd's ever talked about his experience working on Halloween. That's pretty weird. It's pretty, pretty scary. Towards the end of the series, they got desperate in <laughs> drawing connections to the Yeah, original. okay, yeah. okay. As uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, she had to make her Activia commercials and do other things. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be part of this anymore. This is, this is silly. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, the little kid grew up. <laughs> uh, the the stepsister of the little kid grew up. <laughs> oh, yeah, they imply in Halloween 6, Jamie Lloyd, the little girl from part 4 and 5, She's been abducted by the cult, and she's oh. and she has a baby, and they insinuate in the movie that the baby is Michael Myers's baby, even though Jamie Lloyd is his niece. Yeah, and, was and when the fuck would Michael Myers have sex with anybody? It's very stupid. Yeah. Oh, and this is speaking of stupid. She just threw the knife away. Oh yeah, she sticks a, um, a hanger in his eye. Yeah, this is weird. I. I think it's right after this. She sticks the hanger in his eye and he takes the mask off for a second. And you see his face yeah, and he just do. looks like a guy. But I remember when I was first watching these movies for the first time, I watched part four and then I was looking at the box for part five and it was like, finally, for the first time, Michael mm -hmm. Myers unmasked. Because I think he takes his mask off for a second in that. Yeah. And he's still just a guy. Like, why make that a big deal? Well, that he was like completely in five. He was completely silhouetted. Yeah. This is like... his eye or something, right? In five? Oh, it, it's, I remember it being like almost complete silhouette. Yeah. Here it's like, here's this you just, guy. You just see his face, yeah. And they hired this actor to play him. Mm -hmm. And he's yeah, not, not the Nick, guy. It's he, not Nick Castle. Right, it's just actor man. And uh, he has this crazy stare and then they put, he yeah. puts the mask back on. and He's just a guy. Yeah. And that's sort of the point. John Carpenter talked about, you know, the decision of showing him or not showing him. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, she threw away the knife oh, again. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Even Jamie Lee Curtis hates that. I've heard her talk about that. Okay, I'll get shot six times. Yeah, that's how the second one starts. He runs outside, he meets back up with the cop, and he's like, I shot him! I shot him six times! Call the police! Tell the sheriff I shot him! Who? Tell him he's still on the loose! I shot him six times! I shot him six times. I, I shot him in the heart. I, can't have gotten very far. Come on. I shot him six times. Yeah. This guy, this man is... Couldn't have shot him six times. You think I'm lying, Sheriff? I think you missed him. No man can take six slugs. I've told you this isn't a man. <laughs> Look out. Slow down. What? Oh. An hour ago, I stood up and, and fired six shots into him. He just got up and walked away. That's when he starts... The start of Donald Pleasance is overacting. <laughs> that got increasingly more crazy as the series went along. <laughs> oh, here, if you look very closely, you can see creases on her face. Do you see that? Like under her eye? Yeah. Uh, that's because right before they shot the scene, she was sleeping on a corduroy couch downstairs. <laughs> they, they woke her up and threw her in front of the camera. <laughs> so she still has the imprints on her face. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's lines. great. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That is a fun movie fact, Jay. <laughs> you see the creases on Donald Pleasant's face? That's, That's just old his... age. <laughs> <laughs> That's boring. There wasn't enough killed. I hope 40 years from now, Michael Myers will be in space. <laughs> Killing people on the International Space Station. <laughs> I hope we get to see that house again, and I hope Buster Rhymes is involved somehow. No. That's what everybody said when this movie came out, right? I can't wait to see the next one. I hope Buster Rhymes is in it. Trick or treat, motherfucker! Still running, stop it, please, for God's sake, please stop it. There's no more time. You've got to, please, stop it, stop it now, turn it off, turn it off. Stop it, stop it, stop it, no, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it.